Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Psychology Network. Today's topic which we would be studying is the psychological thought in the Eastern system. This is the part 2 of the series. In the part 1, I have covered Bhagavad Gita plus Hindu philosophy. I will link uh, down below in the description box the link for this video. It is the part 1. Let's get into Sufi philosophy. This particular slide is not very important, but I have added this just to give you an overview what Sufism is and uh, the characteristics of Sufism. So it was developed in the Islamic world and what Sufism is saying that one has to traverse the Sufi path or the tariqa, which is a method of establishing a direct communion with the divine reality. Now, what is the divine reality? It is the God. Because God is real. God is not mixed up with the worldly pleasures what we see god is away from all this god is the hakikat god is the real reality the divine reality that is what sufism is basically saying now according to the sufi beliefs one has to go through different stages or makamat and different psychological condition or hal to experience the god now we say uska hal kitna bura ho gaya hai ya uska hal kya hai so that is hal here. That is what this is talking about. The third, that this uh, direct communion with the divine reality and the following of the method, this has to be done under strict supervision of the spiritual director, which is called Sheikh, Peer or Murshid. Now, they have already covered this path of the direct communion with the God. They have done this path. They have covered this part and now they are helping others to cover it. The fourth is the dis disciple who is under the spiritual director uh, progresses through these stages which I just talked about and the states by practicing spiritual exercises like self-mortification, recollection of God's name to, att uh, to attain concentration or zikr. The Sufi organized impassioned musical re, uh, recital called the Sama. This is because to induce a mystical state of ecstasy. Now, there is an organization of Sufis into various orders. Suppose th this is one order, this is second, this is third, this is fourth, maybe this is Kadri, this is Chisti, uh, this is Suhuravardi, etc. And these orders were founded by leading figures who lent their name to the order itself. Order is called Silsila. Now from the place, the center of all the official activities of Sufi, uh, Sufism or Sufi order, this is the Khanka. It is the hospice. Uh, this is the place where all the spiritual training is imparted to the disciples. Now we'll talk about the three aspects of the human being. Now Sufism again, here it's just written it's a communion with the God, which we just established in the previous slide. So uh, Sufis regard the soul as the agency of the communication with God. It is the higher soul, Sufis believe, that was created before the human being itself. Before human being came into the existence, soul was created. Now, what does human being have? What do they consist of? They have a kalb. Now, the kalb is the spiritual heart. The kalb is considered to contain the divine spark that leads to spiritual realization. Again, spiritual realization means communi communion with the God. It includes deeper intelligence and wisdom. The third, uh, the second comes your ruh, ruh or the spirit. Now, uh, Ru is witnessing the drama of the life. It is witnessing the life, how it is going and what is their personality and how the personality is behaving in the world. Everything Ru is seeing. But it is uh, considered that when the mind is agitated, we think even the Ru or the self is also agitated, but it is not so. The soul has no agitation and it is always silent. This, uh, the agitations of a person is always at the surface of the mind, never the Ru. Ru can see everything, but it is still very silent in itself. The soul is silent. The third, we, that is conscience or the Sir. Now, this is 
the place it is said where the god himself you know is knowing the man and the man is knowing the god there is a fourth thing of uh, thing of the soul which we have to uh, talk about that is very important these three terms here are very important and then comes your nafs now nafs sufis regard as the seat of passion that create hurdles in the communion with the higher self now we have to transform this nafs how the transformation ha- happens we have this nafs a amara which is the lustful so- uh, soul or the id this is the uh, freud co- uh, comparison which uh, i have done uh, the id is a concept given by freud so nafs a amara can be compared to the id now we have nafs a lawama which is a self blaming soul which is the ego again compared to id a uh, sorry compared to uh, freud's ego that turns into nafs a mat mat uh, matmena matmena nafs a matmena which is a peaceful soul so this is a transformation of nafs nafs cannot be removed but only be transformed so we return to the truth truth or the reality what is the reality the communion with the god or the higher self basically they are saying that the mind is conditioned and to go beyond this we need self knowledge by that we mean extensive awareness and stillness of the mind which would dis- dissolve all all delus- delusions now all delusions here basically they are talking about this agitation the physical world is considered to be real because we can see it we can sense it from our five sense organs but the aim is of sufism is to bring about certain changes in a man's consciousness wherein he transcends the limitation of physical existence and gets into spiritual existence so this was your nafs this particular chart is very important next which we come is the concept of fana now what is this fana fana is uh, the said that the mind is empty and a person is in the path of god realization the mind is empty and the person is on the path of god realization this is fana how can this be achieved this can be achieved by constant meditation and very deep contemplation which purifies the physical body and the mind and um which would again help in god realization to attune one's heart to the level of divine consciousness is the object of the sufi prayer the sufi prayer which you are indulging in it is every method which sufism is saying there is it's all for the communion with the god or the higher self or being the spiritual this is what i'm saying getting into the spiritual existence now when somebody is in fana they are without accepting or rejecting of what they are seeing or thoughts in their mind they they do not accept it they do not reject it they are very alert they are extractive yet it is empty fana is almost like they say to die before we die the actual death and before that there is a death of the mind where it's empty it's not judging it's not accepting it's not rejecting uh the heaviest burden of life is told, uh, is told to be the ego which is the nafs and this self of a man creates all sorts of tension misery mischief and conflict fana helps to reduce all this completely remove mischief misery conflict from a person's life now we talk about murakaba murakaba is the meditation it is the it is a means a state of alertness where no thought is interfering a person it is the it is the ability to bring out the supra mental state a level beyond the five senses so there are few advantages of the meditation as well that is it normalizes the nervous system and increase the increases the orderly function of the brain and promotes 
the integrated thinking, regulated action and appropriate behavior. So usually we normally act out whatever comes to our mind, but uh, we have to realize meditation is the action of silence. This was your Murakaba. So this was all you had to know about Sufi philosophy. I have all the four subtopics in one PPT. If you want that PPT uh, and other details, you can leave a comment down below or uh, fill up the form which is there in the description box. The, uh, the link is in the description box. Thank you so much for listening and subscribe and like so I can keep on making free content, free uh, study material for everybody to study. Thank you and have a great day.